All right, guys. This is the lecture for module 34. In this module, we're going to take a look at something called the Phillips curve. So this is the second to last graph that you're going to learn here in this class. Uh, and we're going to kind of talk about the, both the short run and the long run Phillips curve here. Now, the short run Phillips curve is the negative short run relationship between the unemployment rate and the inflation rate. We've talked about in the past how when the unemployment rate goes up during periods of recession, the inflation rate goes down. We've talked about how during an expansionary phase of the business cycle, when the unemployment rate goes down, the inflation rate goes up. And the Phillips curve simply is a graph that shows this. Now you do not have to draw this on the graph there, all right? but this just kind of shows you here unemployment and inflation during certain periods. So over here on the y-axis, we've got the inflation rate and then on the x-axis we've got the unemployment rate and what this shows us is traditionally during most periods when the unemployment rate is high inflation is low and when inf unemployment is low inflation is high all right so if we were to draw that on a short run Phillips curve this is what it would look like so on the y-axis we have our inflation rate x-axis we have our unemployment rate I'm going to put UR there for short short run Phillips curve is going to be downward sloping just like that alright Pretty straightforward. Go ahead and draw that in the little graph that's right there next to it. We're going to come back to it here in a second. Now, <clears throat> the aggregate demand and aggregate supply model is directly linked to the short run Phillips curve. It is imperative that you understand that. So, let's say that there is an increase in aggregate demand, for example, due to an increase in government purchases. Well, that is going to increase real GDP. When that happens, unemployment is going to drop and the price level is going to increase and so that's going to cause inflation to go up in that respect. The opposite is also true. If aggregate demand shifted to the left, price level would drop, meaning inflation would drop, but unemployment would increase. You don't have to draw that anywhere. That's just an example for you to see that. Now, the short run Phillips curve and supply shocks. When it comes to shifting aggregate supply, that actually is going to cause the short run Phillips curve All right, to actually let me try and draw that one again. Those aren't very good. All right. So I'm going to draw the aggregate demand, aggregate supply graph on the left, combined with the short run Phillips curve. Okay, so we're going to start everything in long run equilibrium. All right, now let's say that we are perfectly at long run equilibrium. Okay, so if we are perfectly in long run equilibrium, that means if we were to label that as a point here on the short run Phillips curve, right, that means we're in our, uh, at our natural rate of unemployment and inflation is normal. So we'll just pretend like that means that our inflation rate is going to be 2% and our unemployment rate is going to be 5%. Well, if short run aggregate supply, let's say that OPEC puts an embargo on oil exports to the United States. That's going to cause short and aggregate supply to shift to the left. Well, now we are at a higher price level. However, our real GDP also decreased. There's no way that that makes any sort of sense here on our Phillips curve. So what's going to happen is anytime short and aggregate supply shifts to the left, that's going to cause a rightward shift in the short run Phillips curve. Because now, right, let's say that this means that unemployment is at uh, 8%, right? We can show that on the graph here. And let's 
say that inflation jumps up to 4%. That's just an example for you. If you would like to draw that, uh, you can draw that on the two graphs or on the back or on the other back page, wherever. But reference this when, and think about this as we are doing work with the Phillips curve. Now, inflation expectations in the short run Phillips curve, the expected rate of inflation is the rate that employers and workers expect in the near future. Higher expected inflation causes workers to desire higher wages, which leads to an increase in the shifts of the short run Phillips curve. And so we're going to kind of talk about that there. So if inflationary expectations increase, that means short run Phillips curve is going to shift to the right. Um, now, basically what ended up happening is in the late 70s was stagflation. Right after the Phillips curve was, was kind of invented and created, we had stagflation, so that caused a rightward shift. People didn't really know what was going on. I'll explain this more in class, but uh, that, that kind of led to them realizing that, hey, the Phillips curve still exists. It just exists further out to the right than it did before. All right. Now, the long run Phillips curve shows the relationship between the unemployment and inflation after expectations of inflation have had time to adjust to experience. To avoid accelerating inflation over time, the unemployment rate must be high enough that the actual inflation rate matches the expected rate of inflation. We call this point the non-accelerating inflation rate of unemployment, or NARU. Great acronym right there, NARU. Is the unemployment rate at which inflation does not change over time. All right, NARU, you guys, is typically equal to the natural rate of unemployment. Basically, if we're there, our uh, inflation rate is going to not change. All right, it's going to stay at 2% if we're at 5% unemployment. That's the theory behind the non-accelerating inflation rate of unemployment. That means that our long-run Phillips curve is actually going to be this vertical line right there. So pretend like this isn't here. Let me pretend like I'm drawing this for you for the first time. All right, we got IR and then UR. So our long run Phillips curve, guys, is always going to be placed at whatever our natural rate of unemployment, which in the United States, you know, is between 4 and 6%, or if we were to cut it in half, we would say 5%. We would then draw our short run Phillips curve there, and if we were right there in the middle, right, then that would mean that our inflation would be 2%. All right. Again, the natural rate of unemployment, that's the level of unemployment that the economy needs in order, in order to avoid accelerating inflation. All right. Um, now, costs of disinflation. Once inflation has become embedded in expectations, getting inflation back down can be difficult because disinflation can be very costly. It requires high levels of unemployment and the sacrifice of large amounts of aggregate output. We'll take a look at how the Federal Reserve got the, uh, got the inflation rate down post stagflation but it, it took hint it took a lot of economic pain for most people all right um, debt deflation all right deflation is really bad in the economy again we'll talk about this more in detail in class but debt deflation is a reduction in aggregate demand arising from an increase in the real burden of outstanding debt caused by deflation so if our money becomes worth more suddenly the amount that we owe suddenly becomes more so our debt is currently $22 trillion. If there was deflation, that would seem like a lot more money. All right. There is also a zero bound on the nominal interest rate, meaning it cannot go below zero. In most cases, we'll talk more about that, but there's only so much the Federal Reserve can do in our case to get the economy going again if there's deflation because they cannot drop below 0% interest rate. A liquidity trap is when monetary policy is unable to stimulate an economy because nominal interest rates are up against the zero bound. So if our interest rates are at zero and the Fed still wants to stimulate the economy, there's not a lot they can do to get that going. The Fisher effect simply states that, uh, go and write this down, essentially with the Fisher effect, actually I might have already had you guys write it down. Uh, basically, if inflationary expectations increase, Inflation is going to increase. All right, that, that's all it means. So, um, here, let me delete this real quick. All right, so pretend like this isn't here. Here's what I want you guys to draw on the two graphs that are right there. All right, first of all, movements along the short and Phillips curve. Those are going to be caused by shifts in aggregate demand. That's going to cause a movement along the short run Phillips curve. A shift 
in the short run Phillips curve, remember this is for the short run Phillips curve, is going to be caused by a shift in aggregate supply and also a change in inflationary expectations. Technically, inflationary expectations do shift aggregate supply. However, we're going to make this point more clear when we think about the shifts of the Phillips curve just so that you can remember it. So in the first graph here, Pin keeps messing up. So let's say uh, that there is a shift in aggregate. Let's say that the government uh, increases tax rates. All right. Well, that's going to cause unemployment to increase, and so we're going to have a, a movement down to point B right there. They increase taxes, that decreases aggregate demand, and that leads to a movement down to the right along the Phillips curve. A shift. It should be a U, not an O. Let's say that aggregate supply increases because of an increase in productivity. Um, when that happens, that will cause a leftward shift because now at our 5% unemployment rate, we can have a much lower inflation rate. All right. If you have any questions, write them down. Reference your book. Let me know. Bring the questions to class, and we'll get them answered. Have a good rest of your day.